Welcome back to Fire Fork. <laughs> How's the serenity? Welcome back to Fire to Fork, and welcome back to another installment of my 10-year tour series. If you haven't seen the other episodes, you can go and watch them if you want, but don't worry, this will not. Uh, you can watch this independently, and it'll all make sense. Now, we are talking about my 10-year tourer, which is my 2020 Prado VX. Uh, it's the late model, so it's got the 500 newton meter engine, uh, and I love it. Uh, so, everything on this build is designed to last 10 years plus. Um, uh, nothing is, no crap is going on it, buy once, buy right, um, and it's designed to be incredibly reliable, comfortable, and fuel efficient. So, where we left off last time, uh, I'm, I'm going through this chronologically, um, so the next thing I got done, which was actually on in the last video, I just didn't have time to <laughs> include it, uh, were the side steps. The side steps are done by a guy uh, with a company called Donald Industries. I hadn't seen them before. They're very hard to find. You basically only find them on Facebook. Um, he's a local guy. They cost 1100 bucks. Uh, no sponsorship or anything. They're beautiful quality. They look nice. Um, and I have dragged them on a few rocks, including having both wheels off the ground and sliding oh. the thing end to end on a rock up into Kimberley when I got bogged and zero damage. So not even the powder coat is cracked. Very, very impressed. He doesn't call them rock sliders, but I can assure you they are. Now, speaking of rock sliders and what I've done there, uh, in the Prado VX, there is a little Easter egg, I guess, and there's something I think they're called puddle lights, uh, which is a pretty crap name, but anyway, um, they're little lights underneath the car that turn on when you open the doors or unlock the car or a whole bunch of things. They're connected to the proximity key. And yeah, I quite like them. And it was a real shame when I took the original side steps off, oh, the lights were all built in to the side step. And it was kind of, it was a bit of a shame to lose them. So I thought, well, chucked a multimeter under there and yep, 12 volts, uh, you know, good 12 volt signal there. So I thought, well, why not grab a couple more of my, or not a couple more, a couple of Lightforce Rock 9s. Sorry, there are mozzies everywhere here. It's shocking. Um, Lightforce Rock 9s, which are rock lights, they're 9 watt. Um, and I just sicker flex them inside the, uh, inside the, the sliders, um, poking out the holes, uh, and then had them wired up to the 12 volt signal. <laughs> And they work exactly like factory, although they are a bit brighter. One of the best things I did was take this thing to the Kimberley and get a bit of red dirt on them. It sort of made them a little bit warmer, a little bit less bright, and they're really, really good. Highly recommended if you've got a VX or a Kakadu um, and you want to retain those lights. I can't turn them on on demand. They just work exactly like the factory ones. Um, anyway, that's that. You can call me a wanker if you want. I won't be mad having underbody lights. The 15-year-old um, Harry who, who loved Fast and the Furious is very, very happy with me. Now, staying underneath, uh, when I was at Aspect Off Road, Aspect Off Road is a place that they sort of specialize in 200 series and Prados, excuse that. Um, and they did actually did a really good job in my car, um, no sponsorship or anything, just you know, credit where credit's due. Um, they installed my Kayon shock guards. Uh, my shocks were looking pretty shot at. Um, it's a very expensive system, that Dobinson system I have. Um, I think the shocks are about 800 bucks a corner, roughly. Um, so, you know, it's, it's pretty spicy to <laughs> have something under there that's just getting battered by rocks. So, Kayon have these great guards that go over the top, and after, I can tell you after my Kimberley trip, my shocks look identical to when I left, uh, and even the guards don't look at all damaged so very happy with that um, definitely worthwhile uh, probably should have done it sooner but the only regret I have is not doing it sooner now while I was protecting underneath I went the whole K on system with everything except for the um, fuel tank guard so this is the K on um, UVP I wanted to steal underbody protection because of a whole bunch of reasons chief amongst which is strength and as well as that 
um, I didn't like the idea of aluminium underneath because I don't like to mix metals too much. Um, having aluminium bolted directly to steel is a very, very good way of attracting rust to the steel. Uh, if you don't know, if you mix metals, the more corrosive metal will start to corrode. So for example, if you put a stainless steel screw into some mild steel, and my car is made of mild steel, um, that piece of mild steel will start to corrode and rust. Uh, and that's what I didn't want to happen. Sorry, I've just got the sun coming into my eyes. I'm just going to quickly move. I don't know if this is any better, but we'll have a crack. Um, the UVP, under vehicle protection, uh, so far I've scraped it along quite a few rocks, uh, bashed it into a couple of tree roots and things like that. It looks perfect. There are no scratches, there are no... The um, powder coat's all perfect, certainly hasn't bent. Very, very impressed. Definitely worthwhile. I was not at all happy with the standard um, underbody armour from Toyota. It was very weak and not enough of it. Uh, and I really like the design of the KM1 particularly because you can actually still service the car without removing it, which I really, really like. Um, it's so annoying to have to pull a, pull a bash guard off just to change the oil. And the last thing I did while I was at Aspect is I got them to install a fuel filter kit. So that's a secondary fuel filter. Um, that was really, really important for me because I fill up in dodgy places on this most recent trip. I got a tank of fuel in a place called Nulligine. Nulligine's an awesome little place, but I don't imagine they go through a huge amount of fuel and I don't imagine that they're, I'd, I'd say they're quite susceptible in places like that to contamination. Fuel contamination in a modern common rail diesel like this uh, is catastrophic, basically. You get water in your engine, you are screwed. Um, nothing like old diesels like my old 80 series you could pretty much you know pour a can of coke in there and it would still bloody run but you know that's the nature of uh, i guess a modern advancement there's always going to be some little annoying thing uh, and that's a pretty cheap bit of insurance the other thing i got was a breather kit so i got a diff and transfer case and gearbox breather kit um that's run right up high it's got filters it's got all that kind of stuff so that keeps my um, you know, everything safe from water. They've got a quite a cool system with like a little springy coil um, <laughs> bit for the rear diff for the breather, which I haven't seen before and I was very impressed. It's a very cool little system. Um, usually it runs down the pan hard and stuff. So this is, yeah, really cool. Anyway, um, definitely worth getting if you plan to do anything with water, mud, um, that kind of thing. Sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes you fall into things uh, unintentionally. I've been driving next to a river before and slid into it. It's not very much fun, but you definitely want all your breathers and whatnot in the right place there. Speaking of breathers, there's a big four inch one on the side of the car. Uh, that's from Moonlight Fabrication, Moonlight 4x4. They, uh, uh, they're kind of one of the original stainless snorkel places. Um, I know plenty of high profile guys that run them and they don't need to, they can run anything they want, they choose to run these. Um, they are bloody tough. They've actually got two brackets. So there's a bracket on the pillar and there's a bracket inside behind the guard. Uh, it feels rock solid. They told me a story about a, a guy who rolled his GQ and he said that the snorkel probably saved his wife because the other pillars collapsed and the one with the snorkel holding it up did not. So very, very impressive. Uh, the the work, workmanship in there was insane. Um, now, I, I could have, of course, gone for something like a Safari. Nothing wrong with a Safari. I've, I've run them before. Um, I have gold wheels and orange lights. There's no part of this car that isn't, that is designed to be, you know, subtle and understated. I want this thing to look cool. I want to turn around and want to take a photo of it. Um, I love the look of this car and that black snorkel in satin black looks so bloody good. Um, I love looking at it. I, I like I like the little bit of noise it makes at low speed. I can't hear it with the windows up. Uh, 
Uh, I can't hear the induction noise with the windows up. I can't hear it on the freeway. Uh, windows up or down, it makes no difference um, to how much louder it is So at, at high speed. So very impressive that, that it's not droning or annoying, um, but there is a little, you know, at least you can hear some induction noise. You can hear the turbo. You can hear the actual engine at low speed with the window down. I really, really enjoy that. To be honest, my only regret is not getting the airbox as well. And if I do get this thing tuned, I'll almost certainly go back and get the airbox as well because <coughs> factory Toyota airboxes are garbage, absolute garbage. There is definitely dust getting through. So you have to use rubber grease all around the outside of your um, air filter. I got that tip from Aaron Offroader. He's a champion, wicked Prado. Definitely check out his channel. Uh, he's got a Prado, this sort of spec Prado on 35s. So, well, he's a Kakadu, but this sort of shape Prado. Very impressive. Now, something's been annoying me for a while. My rear camera, I had it basically like taped on and tech screwed in and it was just dodgy as hell um, onto the rear so that I could run a bin bag. Not, the annoying thing about Prado's is the reversing camera is right in the middle of the wheel. So if you want to run a bin bag, which I do, uh, you have to get it relocated. Kayon actually made a mount for me. I asked them to make one and they did. And they now sell it. I think it's like 50 or 60 bucks. It's very inexpensive. Um, you know, custom made stainless steel bracket. It's beautiful, it's elegant, it's powder coated black. I love it. Um, I definitely recommend that if you want to run a bin bag on your Prado. Yes, it does put the lines, you know, your the indicator lines um, for when you're reversing, it does put them slightly out because it is in a different spot, but overall it's 10 times better. It's actually much better for trailers as well because you can see the tow ball, uh, which I couldn't previously. Uh, and if, look, if you do have a giant bin bag like mine, it will block a little bit of the camera, but a lot less than when it was covering the whole bloody thing. Oh, also, if you are doing this and you have a stock wheel, you probably will need a wheel spacer uh, to space it out. I just had a couple anyway in a drawer, uh, but I think actually Kaon sells them as well. But yeah, any wheel spacer will do. I think you need it spaced out about, uh, about 10 mil, um, just so you know. Um, and we'll see what happens with my rear wheel in the future because there are some quite an exciting mod coming up there uh, but that'll be in the next video uh, speaking of Kayon stuff you may have heard previously I cracked my water tank I got it fixed it cost me very little to get it fixed it was like 50 bucks um, but it was annoying nonetheless uh, Kayon came back and said we so sorry they've actually completely redesigned it they've made it much stronger and they've sent me their new model I've taken to the Kimberley it's done a lot of corrugations it's been i actually landed the car on it um fully landed the car on it which it is not supposed to do no damage scratches and a little ding but uh, no cracking or anything like that very impressed with the new design tank uh, definitely would recommend that tank um very 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 good uh, and stainless is great because you don't get a funky water taste now the last thing um before this kimberly trip i decided to get a second solar panel and I'm really glad I did because I tell you what running the freezer in the trailer and the fridge in the car was very power hungry and despite having a big battery I've got 150 amp lithium in there the Amptron lithium which is really good you still need a way of putting it back in you take power out you need a way of putting power back in that means you need something with quite a lot of grunt I ended up going for a companion 200 watt uh, I've got 120 on the roof but it was largely covered by my boat so I really needed a folding panel um, there are plenty of blankets out there and I've used blankets I've got a blanket uh, the ang ability to angle it is really really important I definitely recommend something you can angle. I didn't want big, heavy, rigid panels, which are cheap and, and, a, and a good solution if, you, if you're on a budget. Um, oh, Fred's run away, good. Um, but if you want something a bit lighter and a bit more compact, or a lot lighter and a lot more compact, yeah, these things are great because they've got little basic legs, little soft legs that flip out, and it means you can get sun for a lot longer. The sun's going over, um, if you've got a blanket, you kind of only get it from sort of 10 to two, you get good sun and the rest of the time you don't. Um, whereas if you've got your, um, if you've got your, your panels angled, um, in, in, a, in here where you face them north, um, basically if you've got it say northeast in the morning, um, it is going to, uh, you're going to get that sun at 6.30 or 6 o'clock when the sun comes up and to be honest most of the time if it's just an overnighter or something by 8.30 I'm fully charged. That first bit of sun is cool and incredibly powerful um, and that is the best sun. You can also get the sun as the sun sets so that 
basically it means that your car is running off the battery less and getting charged more. It, it makes a huge difference. I actually, I think it honestly makes, I haven't tested this, but I, uh, ballpark 30 to 40% more efficient uh, by having the panels angled. Uh, I might look that up, might look up. I'm sure there's someone who's done some research on that. I'll put it on the screen if there is. And <clears throat> that's basically it for the Prado for now. Um, I'm really happy with where it is, um, except that I'm not. I'm going to go into that in the next episode. We're going to take many tools to this thing and pretty well ruin what I thought was going to be the perfect setup. See you then. Oh, also, I'm going to be taking a few weeks off. Uh, we're due to have a baby this week. So by the time this comes out, I will definitely have a baby. Or if I don't have a baby, I'll be very upset. So see you in the next one. Cheers.